it's 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 really always an interesting question because I think um, there are writers who go at this very differently. You know, there are no two who are exactly alike. Um, but I think there are basically, in some ways, sort of two I don't want to call them two camps, but two ways of approaching things. There are people who really know exactly where they're going, and they find it plenty worthwhile writing those poems or writing those stories. I mean, Joyce Carol Oates, for example, who's written more than this library can contain, um, a prose writer, um, fiction writer mostly, you know, she says, it's all in my head when I sit down to write. I just, it's like taking dictation, which in some ways is the only thing that could explain how she can write so fast. I mean, she writes faster than I read. I can't keep up with her. Um, I've had students who've really wanted to plot everything out. Um, or, and there are other writers, not just my students, you know, who I want, but I was just thinking of one particular student who actually told me that he used to go into school to the blackboard and and plot out every encounter in his work, every conversation, you know, sort of ahead of time was kind of blocked. It was sort of like making a movie with a storyboard or whatever they call it, you know. Um, I just can't imagine doing that because when I start, I have a vague itch that I'm trying to scratch and I don't have any idea where I'm going. And, and occasionally, the most I can say about knowing where I'm headed is one of my books, Civil Wars, um, I, somewhere along the line, and this certainly wasn't when, when I began, but somewhere along the line, this book is set in Jackson, Mississippi in 1979. Um, I knew there was a flood. I'd learned as I was thinking back to the time, I'd already left Mississippi at, the, at this time, um, that there had been a big flood, and I thought, oh, that's interesting. I'm going to research that flood and write that into the book. And I had a picture in my head of my main characters with the man approaching the woman, the husband approaching the wife in a rowboat to save her or, you know, during this flood. But I didn't know what was going to transpire between them. I mean, at this point in the, early in the book, these two are having trouble with each other. And I didn't know whether they were going to stay together or separate. Uh, so I didn't know what news he was bringing her or what invitation he was bringing her in the boat. I just had a vis visual picture of Teddy approaching Jesse in a rowboat in the flood. Do you call that plotting ahead? No, not really, because I didn't know what, you know, I, I knew that I had a situation brewing, but I didn't know where I was going with it. With the other books, I don't know, I don't want to know. You know, I don't mind having little inklings, but they may change. So I can't imagine being one of those people who knows ahead of time. I don't have, I can't say it's a bad way to write. I just can say, I can't quite figure out how you would do that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and interestingly, my kids, when they were in school, my daughters um, would be in, creative, in classes where their English teacher would try to do what she called creative writing, and this happened to both of them. The teacher would say, give me an outline for a story and then write the story. And I would say, are you kidding? Write the story and then make an outline of what you did. Because, you know, I might do a paper that way. Well, even at that, I tend to move much more intuitively, much more instinctively. I had a very interesting conversation with Demeter today where we both agreed that we are fortunate to have a kind of natural sense of structure that, that some people don't have, where we kind of, you know, you just have a feeling that you know how you're going to bring something around where the end might echo the beginning, or some of the kinds of things David talked about the other night um, when he talked about the architecture of his piece. Um, you know, when I write, I, I kind of have, a, to some extent, a natural sense of form. I don't have to think about it too much. Of course, I think about it, but I don't have to plot it out um, because I'm just following instinct. But I just can't imagine knowing where I'm going and finding it interesting. I have to say, however, that it's very inconvenient to write this way. I mean, one of my books took me nine months to write plus a few more months to kind of finish it after I had dealt with the commercial aspects of, you know, getting it bought. Um, then I went and finished it, so it was maybe another couple months. One of my books took me five years, Civil Wars, that same book that ended with the flood, because I didn't know where I was going. And I can't say that's a very, you know, it's not something I would recommend to somebody necessarily, because I didn't have a clue. I knew kind of what the burden was of what I was writing about 
where I wanted it to be set, but I didn't have a plot and I just didn't have a clue. So I wandered in the wilderness for a long time and you better have a lot of time to kill if you're going to write that way because, you know, it's not a straight shot at all. And some of them been kind of in the middle, you know. But at the moment, I think I said the other night at the outreach that I'm stuck with a couple of stories that I can't end. And part of the reason for that is that I didn't really, I kind of knew what I was writing, but I didn't know where I was going with it. And since I'm not trying to make a point, I'm not trying to, you know, enlarge on a, on a, a theme that's like an op-ed article, um, I don't necessarily know where I'm headed. I had a young man approach me after the reading the other night and said, well, when you said that there wasn't a theme, you know, don't you think that we should be telling people things that we think are important and that they need to know? And I said, yes, but you don't approach it that way. You know, if you're writing fiction, or if you're writing poetry, sure, there may be things that you want people to, to hear from you, but if you really are full of opinions, um, probably you should be writing an essay or an op-ed article or an editorial or something like that, because that's not really the stuff of fiction or, or um, essays that are, well, essays maybe, but certainly not poetry. So, um, inconvenient, but it's the way I work.